Let's have a quick look at this strand multiplier operator in Ornatrix for Maya. To show it off, I'm just going to quickly add a furball setup on top of this character and quickly scale the length and the thickness of the strands and I'll just leave everything else as default. So in a scenario where you have a character like this and the hairs are pretty sparse for whatever reason and you just want to increase the density or you want to simulate a fur effect where one follicle can have multiple hairs sticking out of it, you can use the strand multiplier operator which can be found on the shelf. And once you add it, you will notice that each strand now has multiple hairs sticking out of it. Now by default, this applies to all of the strands on your character. However, you can use the various options to control where this happens and how the additional strands are copied and applied on top of your character. So the very first parameter is the strand group. And just like in all the other Ornatrix operators, this parameter controls which strands this operator will apply to based on their strand group parameter. And this is covered in a separate video. The second parameter is the random seed and changing this will basically modify the randomness and allow you to specify different looks for your character. The third parameter is twist and what this allows you to do is to create a little bit of a curl or a twist around the original strand and make the newly created strands go around it a little bit. So as a modified you can see that the new strands are now kind of curling around the stem or the original strand from which they were created. So let's just leave it at here and the next parameter is probability. Basically this is asking what are the chances of a single strand being copied on this character? Right now it is set at 1, which means every single hair will have copies created from it. But if I decrease it, you can see that we are having fewer and fewer hairs going through this operation. So if I set this to 0, none of the hairs are being copied at all. And if I set this to something like 0 0.5, you can see that roughly half of the hairs are being copied in our case. So you can use this, for example, to just apply this operator on top of the very few select strands and make this at random. Or you can use the probability multiplier to specify a map for this to vary this parameter along the surface of your character. Likewise, you can use these strand channels, which are also covered in a separate video, to use either vertex colors or painted strand channels to control this parameter. The next parameter specifies the number of copies which are being created. So right now the set at three, meaning that every single strand has extra three strands added at the same location as itself. But I can change this to any value. So for example, if I change this to one, then we don't get any copying at all and we're just kind of modifying the shape of the existing strand or if I set this to 5 that we then we are getting a lot more copies for each single strand that we create so use this to control how dense the hair you want after this operator is applied. Likewise, you can use the multiplier to specify a map that will vary this parameter across the character surface, or you can use a channel to do so. The next parameter is the spread at root and the spread at tip combined with the spread ramp. Spread parameter and the following fluff parameter allow you to control how far these hairs are pushed away from the stem of their original strand and to kind of fluff up the results. So using the ramps, you can control this value along the length of the strand the leftmost value being at the root and the rightmost being at the tip. So I'm just going to change this a little bit so we have some kind of offset at the very root. And when I do this and I change the spread at root, you can see that for the spread parameter, this is moving the strands along the x-axis. And for the fluff root parameter, this is moving them along the y-axis. So if as I change this parameter, we're changing the, essentially the volume of these strands. And it is good to have this option because you can really increase the apparent density of your hairs without really doing any additional styling, just simply by applying this operator onto your existing hair. The final parameter is called shift and this parameter just like spread allows you to vary itself along the strand length and allows you to specify the root and the tip values. So shift is essentially the same as spread but it'll just offset the strands instead of spreading them. So it starts at zero and allows you to specify the negative and positive values and if I change this to a small value like 0 0.5 you can see that the hairs are now a little bit offset from their center and you can change this parameter at the root and the tip to control the way that you want the multiplied strands to behave. So all of these parameters give you good control over how your strands are modified. And just like any operator with Ornatrix, it works well within the operator stack. And for example, if I wanted to modify the shape underneath this operator, I can always go up to the operator below, which is the hair from guides, and add something like a surface comb. And then as I modify this operator below, we are still getting the multiplier node applied above, which means that all of the stuff that we did before and all of the parameters that we specified are non 
destructive and we can continue working while at the same time seeing the effects that we created. So this is it for the strand multiplier operator. I hope you find good use for it in your own hair grooming operations. Thank you very much for watching.